but yeah, I, I guess gay marriage is a great place to go when we're talking about religion and the state. Um, I found it very interesting that you mentioned that you were opposed to what you see as kind of like the, the run amok idea of this sexual liberation, this materialism where people mm. are having 13 year olds who are cutting off, you know, their genitalia to yep. identify as something else. I believe that's equally ridiculous and shouldn't be tolerated um, at, at all, none whatsoever. The issue is that this is the logical conclusion of the advancing of LGBT and you know just just sexual revolution in general, that is the natural conclusion of these advancements and of the sexual revolution. Is the um, larger molding and shaping and the relativism around our innate sexual um, uh, creation, the tasks and the responsibilities associated with that. And once we start to tolerate a change in the fundamental building block of civilization, that being the family, marriage, that, you know, if, if we are to talk about the Bible, man and woman who are sent to, you know, multiply and replenish the earth, if we are changing that, it is only logical to assume that, uh, you know, the child drag shows, the drag queen story time, and kinks in pride festivals and six-year-olds seeing it, it's only logical to assume that this follows because we're rewriting what we see as objective rules. So America First people would step in and say, these rules must be applied objectively and we need to have a consistent standard. And that standard is biblical and it is Christian. And if that standard exists for that entire country, we never let these things become relative. Sure. Uh, and and yeah, we, so we can go we can go back and forth on this. Maybe I can ask, ask you a couple quick questions and stuff. Um, so you're saying it's the logical conclusion. Okay, so first off, I would say my support for gay marriage is not based on any biblical, uh, direct biblical appeal. Again, we're operating in a, I won't say Judeo-Christian, I'll say we're operating in a Western framework, which has its roots in Christianity. So in some sense, there is a direct... Before you start, can I just ask one question yeah. to clarify? I understand that you're not um, in in favor of it from any like religious or whatever position, and, and probably from what I from what I'm guessing from people who I've talked to who are you know either Christian or conservative um, or centrist and do favor gay marriage or at mm -hmm. least favor its legalization, it's because it's legally consistent. Um, the thing that I would ask is if you are open to opposing gay marriage on the grounds of um, you know opposing the conclusion of it. Which, which I kind of outlined before. Sure. If there was a moral argument made that said gay marriage ultimately will cause more harm than good, then, then I'd change my mind. I mean, the reason I support it is because I think it, would, it causes more good than harm, so to speak. So here's why. So first off, I, I don't view marriage as solely a religious institution. Um, first off, and, and again, uh, there's a, I, I don't know what you're... Well, maybe I should ask you this up front. Do you believe in the theory of evolution? Do you think evolution is a valid way to explain things um i believe in i believe in microevolution are you familiar with that generally is that steven meyer and crew something like yeah, intelligent Stephen design meyer, he's a my, myers is what's called a um uh, i'm trying to think of this because i was actually really into what but my, you don't but, about. but you 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 agree with it to, mm -hmm. you don't reject it outright right or you don't you don't I, I don't believe that we came from apes. I believe that, you know, kind of the Darwinian idea of evolution where yep. it, it, uh, it happens in a micro kind of way. We yep. develop based off of our environment, but not you okay. know, from like sure. the primordial okay. soup. Okay, yeah. fair enough. All right, well, then you can tell me what you think of this. Um, so, uh, so, in, I, so I believe in evolution as it, you know, as it, we, we're descendants of, uh, you know, common ancestors with animals and whatnot. That's why be animal behavior and human behavior is consistent with one another in many cases. That's why we can test medicine on animals and it works. Um, so like marriage is an extension of uh, what's called pair bonding behavior. So there, there are monogamous animals in the animal kingdom, prairie voles, birds, certain kind of monkeys. Um, and you can look at these animals and see in their neurological structures Certain, uh, um, it's, I'm going to oversimplify this at all because I'm not an expert. It, call me out if I'm wrong, anyone who is. But there's a specific uh, hormone receptor called vasopressin. It's a vasopressin receptor. And those animals that have it or have a very a certain version of it are monogamous. And if you genetically engineer the animal to remove that vasopressin receptor, it will become polygamous. So there's like a famous study uh, where they did this with prairie voles. Um, where they literally changed it and, and it changed. Uh, you can see the same thing in humans, and humans have a vasopressin receptor, and those humans who are, uh, 
who have the variant that is less receptive are more likely to cheat. So you can actually see neuro, neurophysiologically a structure that is consistent with pair bonding behavior. Um, I think religion is an evolutionary elaboration of that. So it, it didn't just exist in Christianity. Religion is found throughout many cultures in, that don't even have an analog in Christianity. Um, monogamy is actually, uh, according to Robert Sapolsky at least, uh, the norm in even like tribal uh, um, communities that appeared across time and across uh, culture, that even if a, even if society is polygamous, um, which you're Mormon, correct? So I don't know what you're, we can go into that later. Um, but even if a society is explicitly polygamous at the top, people end up being uh, predisposed to monogamy. Although that, again, it varies. So my point is monogamy is not something that the Bible came up with. And the reason I support gay marriage is because I support monogamy. I support marriage as an institution. I think the nuclear family is good. I think children raised by two parents do better off than children raised by a single parent. And if there are... An, an, the other important key to this is that I think being gay is clearly biologically influenced. I think there's clearly a genetic component to it. Um, and we can go into that if you dispute that. But if that's the case, then I want to extend the, val the, 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 the value that marriage as an institution provides people. I want to provide that to as many people as possible who want to participate in it. Because that is what allow that's what keeps a, a society stable the more monogamous it is. And I believe that we have that... You, you, you might think that like gay marriage is the, uh, you know, that's like the, that's, it's, it's gay marriage and then it's, you know, polygamy and then it's all the weird shit you were talking about. The logical conclusion is the extreme LGBT stuff. I would say that's not the case at all because people who support gay marriage are on fundamentally, op have a fundamentally opposed worldview from the far left who say that marriage is a patriarchal institution created by white people. And so those aren't the same thing at all. And you can't put people like Douglas Murray, who's a gay conservative, in the same category as the people justifying cutting off the breasts of 13-year-olds. So, yeah, any thoughts on that? I'm sure you got a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a few things. Um, I, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I'm trying to, I'm trying to listen as contently as possible. No, I know. And let's go – and feel free to interrupt me more. Let's go let's, – we can go back and forth because – Yeah, no, no problem. So um, to, with the beginning – oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So behaviors within, within animal species. So this is obviously, you know, um, within the LGBTQ debate, you know, and the gay marriage debate, a lot of people talk about the behavior of animals, right? And so I don't really love this argument because, first of all, you know, there's the biblical perspective that, you know, animals as well are fallen, which is why, you know, af after the millennia, you do have that idea of, and I'm not talking about original sin type fallen, but I'm talking about that they are, you know, they, they are in this kind of uh, damned worldly state, which is why, you know, you have the idea, I believe it's in Revelations of, you know, the lion and the lamb together. Um, that's denying what would be the reasonable worldly thing to happen, of course. Um, and that is to say that animals can behave and act or, or do things that are awful um, the same way that humans can. So to, to point to animals and say that, you know, they practice monogamy or pair bonding, which um, means there's kind of this uh, neurological drive rather than a objective or a religious or a natural drive. Um, and natural, I mean, not just, you know, in the biological sense, but also in the creationist sense, in that this is our intention with our creation of man and woman. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, animals rape as well, um, as well as people do. Sure. Uh, yeah, my point is mm -hmm. not that because it's reflected in animals that makes it morally justified. I'm saying that there is, mm -hmm. that, I was just using that example to say that monogamy is deeper than religion. So one thing I want to say, yes. and maybe we can get, and maybe this is important. I think it, I, I could say up front, your, your biblical interpretation, I don't necessarily buy. And I imagine there's a lot, I know there's a lot of people that don't. So do you have an argument against gay marriage that doesn't make direct appeal to the biblical corpus. Yeah, stories. certainly. Um, certainly. Cause, and, and it, when we're talking about my biblical perspective, that would be my view that man and woman are created for the express purpose of bearing children in a, in a heterosexual sense within the confines of marriage. Um, apart from that though, we do get to kind of the idea that I was bringing up earlier, which is that the logical conclusion of, um, gay marriage is everything that we're seeing with, you know, um, the advancement of, you know, pride. And that's because the LGBT movement is inseparable 
from sexual um, display. And sexual display is, in, or rather, uh, in, in the capacity that it is something to be proud of, you are going to see that publicly. So when you have a movement entirely associated with positivity around sex or distinguishing oneself on the basis of their sexual relationships, it is only logical to conclude that that pride is going to be brought out into the common space. But, but when we take the idea of pair bonding, when we take monogamy, which in my opinion, separating us from animals has always been the natural instinct of humans. Um, because of course, you know, between species, it differs. There are species of ape, the bonobos, who are these crazy, um, malicious, terrible sex demons. And then there are the gibbons, who are my favorite ape. <laughs> and they're, you know, obviously much more cordial. They have these, these, um, these relationships. They participate in marriage. It's wonderful. These complex family units. Right. Um, we hate bonobos, by the way. Disgusting creatures. I had to read, by the way, just a bit of a tangent. I had to read an entire article about the wild sex lives of bonobos in an anthropology course I took last year. But that's besides the point. So the, the species, the, the Homo sapien, has always been naturally driven towards, um, towards uh, a, a heterosexual monogamous relationship. And although it has appeared differently throughout time, I would argue that's more out of a necessity for childbirth rather than out of a natural inclination. And even that natural inclination towards like polygamy or whatever, it would be the drive to replenish and to continue always within the confines of heterosexuality. I believe it's it's usually materialism and decadence, although I agree with you that there is a biological component. I would say that's we the have, main you know, driver, the biological component. Sorry. It's the main driver. I don't think it's the main driver. I See, because this is one of those things where it's like the biological components only come out depending on the environment which allows it. Um, there, I'm, I'm sure there's been plenty, plenty, no, just thousands of homosexual people throughout history who have never acted on the impulse because it was not societally acceptable to do so. Sure. Um, and as a consequence... The idea of homosexual marriage um, and, and coming from that, the idea of pride in sexual displays in the you know commonplace had never occurred, at least with homosexuality. I will say, I'll add this caveat, we have had this occur with heterosexuality. This is why pornography exists. It's because people became too content, or rather they associated heterosexuality with the commonplace, with, with the public area or the public space. And that's why we have heterosexuality, we've got sex in movies, we have all these things. So I'm not saying this is an issue exclusive to homosexuality, but it I is something- I definitely think that's the case. It's not, ex it's not it exclusive. No, it's not exclusive. Okay, okay, perfect, right. perfect. Yeah, so, so we're, we agree. Um, that, that does, however, mean that when it comes to, um, it, it basically the same rules apply, right? The way we've seen homosexual, you know, sexual, or rather heterosexual sexual displays happen in the public space is the same way we may see it occur and are seeing it occur with homosexuality. The difference is heterosexuality is the natural incl inclination of the homo sapien, and homosexuality is usually a result of a changing in societal norm. Okay. And by the way, I think, like I said, feel free to interrupt me. I'm, I'm going to do the same to you. So, we'll, and we'll just go back and forth. So I disagree. You said, uh, you said heterosexuality is the natural condition of the homo sapiens. That's not the case. We, we know that upon childbirth, uh, there are differences in, uh, like the brains of, uh, or excuse me, we, we know that, uh, prenatal conditions influence the likelihood of, um, whether or not someone turns out to be gay. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The way you just said that is super important. This variable, which I agree with, by the way, because I've seen the research on that, the prenatal hormones do affect the um, occurrence of homosexuality in the lifetime right. of, of children further down the line, right? right? Which is why statistically, this is really funny. Um, and you guys, by the way, anybody watching this should use this to call people gay, which would be really funny. Uh, don't be mean about it, but it is just kind of funny. If you have three children, the third child is most likely yes. to exist yes. homosexual. Only, however, only, however, only in right-handed males. Really? Yes, which indicates that there's a clearly a genetic component that goes along with the prenatal conditions. Uh huh. Well, well, and, and, and either way, like I, that, that's just a, a weird part of the statistic. The, also, well, I'm, I want to not totally married to scientism, but the thing that I will say <laughs> is that the way okay. you're framing it is also very important. Um, okay. And that is that certain conditions make it more likely that people deviate from the natural inclination. The natural state of man, mm -hmm. without a variable or a change in the prenatal conditions, is to heterosexuality. No, that's not because I just pointed out that it's that the prenatal condition environment only has an effect on people who are right-handed, 
And that that study has been it's like a meme within, you know, amongst whatever scientists or neuroscientists. Well, just one caveat here. One of the reasons I fucking hate the far left is because when they say things like the scientific consensus has said that, you know, global warming says the world's going to blow up or that, the, you know, sex isn't a real thing. It, it makes it more difficult. And I know you said I don't buy into scientism. I, I, the, we, there has to be a line between like do you either deny the facts as they are mm -hmm. or, or, or you just say like what the left as well. It's a subjective and it's up to whatever. So, and, and by the way, by the way, yeah. I should add as a caveat, um, me saying I reject scientism is not me saying that I reject the scientific process. Okay. It's me saying that, you know, I definitely have a, and, and by the way, there's science behind this too. My gut reaction, which science tells me to trust is telling me that <laughs> if we know that right-handed males with different prenatal conditions, um, are the ones who exhibit homosexuality, uh, that tells me that there's something within there that's probably tampering with the results. And I would be surprised if that study is not also, you know, the subject of problems within the field of, of you know, sociology, that being replication crisis, that being, you know, all of these different. It's not a psychological not study. Psychology is where the replication. You know, I, I, said, is. I said, well, uh, genetic studies are not I, I, that, that study has been replicated repeatedly to the point of it becoming a meme. That's how reliable well, but, that finding is. Well, hold, and, on, and hold on, hold on. You know, well, hold on. That wait. almost seems so absurd that it's like I, I that I, it's called. Uh, yes, I don't genes wanna, like, have multiple effects. Science, well, hold on. This is like and fair enough. I, I think there's a yeah. Sorry. And, and you're talking like really loud into the mic. You're just doing yeah, that loud I'll stop thing. moving around and try <laughs> maintain. Sorry. I, I think we can actually maybe we can avoid this. Um, because I because let's go straight to the morality of it. So like let, let's say. To, Let's say that, okay, there, you know, there's, it's a deviation, so to speak, but there's all kinds of deviations in society that we tolerate, you know, like people are schizophrenic or mentally ill and have depression and anxiety and stuff. And, you know, we, we don't say, well, fuck you, you don't, you don't get access to the same rights as other people. Like, if someone is, if someone is born gay... Like, I don't understand why we wouldn't want to just, why we, why we don't want to afford them the right to a legal marriage so they can adopt children and have, engage in a monogamous relationship and raise kids versus single parenthood and, you know, creating a bunch of, uh, you know, gay people who are resentful and then say, actually, fuck marriage. And I do think it's in a, uh, a system that should be abolished. What's the, what's the moral reason not to extend it out? Well, I, I think there's there's a few things. The first, I do kind of want to harp on that idea of, of the natural inclination of man to be towards heterosexuality. I'm not saying that there cannot be natural or uh, biological. I'm, I'm only using those t terms interchangeably in this in this part. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that there can be a biological basis or a biological contribution to the appearance of homosexuality. But this okay. is why, you know, there are far less homosexuals than there are heterosexuals. Um, and that's that is because the natural inclination of man with Without the prenatal conditions being changed, is towards homo is towards heterosexuality. Okay, now, I'm but not saying na that yeah, that. natural has like, nothing to do with moral. The more natural something is, the more it's natural to rape, as you pointed out. So that's not. No, well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I'd, I'd say that that um, the natural inclination is is not to rape um, amongst early the, humans. Uh, well, well, <laughs> I uh, <laughs> hold on. I, what? I I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get down in, into the rape rabbit. <laughs> I'm not gonna get down into the. You rape don't think rabbit. the propensity for uh, violence and murder, for example, is is characteristic no, I, I of think, early I humanity? Think that is the case, but um, I believe right, you so, know these are, these are not necessarily like I the the term natural is I think really where we're getting stuck here. Um, I agree. Natural the, does not imply the, any level of morality to it. Uh, okay. Agree. Agree. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's separate ourselves from the term natural. Um, but you would agree that the, in the majority of cases, um, the outcome of an individual, uh, without certain prenatal conditions being altered or without their, uh, without them being left-handed or without them being right-handed, their, uh, natural inclination. <laughs> Sorry. I, Why don't we just go just straight to me. your point about the logical conclusion is mm -hmm. if we go, if we go from gay marriage, somehow we mm -hmm. get to cutting off the breast of 13 year olds. Oh, you reminded me where I was going to go to yeah, as well. Let's just go. Um, I think, I think one big part of this is that you yourself believe that, that marriage is more of a state institution than a purely religious one. Right. Um, that's a place where we obviously disagree. I believe that marriage is something that's obviously sanctioned by a church. Um, and that is, you know, forever. I don't believe in like, you know, no fault divorce and whatnot. So we probably have different standards around marriage. However, mm -hmm. um, the 
idea of marriage comes about because um, not only I, I believe it's it's this kind of religious and this um, natural thing, but I also believe that it works, and it works particularly within the confines of a heterosexual marriage. I don't believe that two fathers or two mothers will ever do the job of parents as well as a mother. It's definitely father. harder. Um, yes, and so the question for that would be why. It's because um, these two individuals, or, or rather a man and a woman, have Wait, very I, different. I think we agree here. I, PF. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Like and the I, fact that we agree is right, important so because now about, what yeah. you're saying is that the, uh, the the perfect unity between a man and a woman and the differences uh, that they have and the way they come together in a marriage heterosexually is not going to be achieved by a homosexual marriage. Um, or if it is achieved, it's going to be more the outlier because it's harder to do based off the biological similarities between two parents of the same sex. Agree? Sh sure. Yes. So now the thing is, and this is why I say it's the natural conclusion of, of gay marriage is like the openness around sex, is because you are now saying that although the easier and the more biologically consistent thing is a marriage in a heterosexual frame, now because some of the time homosexual marriages, you know, are as okay as as heterosexual marriages we should allow that to be the case so you're operating off of exception but that exception yeah, yeah that exception creates relativism within the frame right there's so, always relativism now, with the in the frame there's no frame that's but, not relativism the, pro the problem is that i disagree that the relativism is good because when you open it up to relativism i'm not saying it's up not only you're opening up not only the possibility of a good homosexual marriage but the possibility of all the other ones which are just biologically incompatible or would never occur or never never flourish the same way a heterosexual marriage would. well let's go back to the relative you said you're opening up for relativism there, that yeah. is an it, like I said, like I agree, like and maybe I can make a, a a biblical argument as a PF Jungian. That's my uh, Christian adjacent interpretation of the Bible. You know, I, I like it's what did Jesus say? The most important commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. I think extending uh, the uh, institution of marriage to people who had no choice in their own sexuality is a good thing. Um, and then you say, uh, and then I, you say, well, <laughs> and then I'll, let me just lead into what, I, what okay. I think your point is, is that by making that claim is like, well, first off, I, that's, I'm guessing you think that's a poor interpretation of the Bible and that, that, that allows like relevance or the relativist relativism to be built into that decision-making. But I would say there is always an element of relativism in any moral decision, no matter what you make. And to say that, well, this relativism will lead to the extreme. It's like, that's a danger. But there's no way to get around that danger other than through talking about it and saying, I support gay marriage for the reasons I do, and I do not support all of the weird, crazy LGBT shit where it's like, let's cut off the breast of 13-year-olds. And I think most people can make that distinction quite easily, and I don't think that relativism is as big of a problem as you make it out to be. Well, I'll just ask you a very easy question because I, I totally understand, and I would say that probably the majority of people who agree with with homosexual marriage, um, which is they the would also right? they would also disagree with you know child drag shows. Uh, we we probably agree that that's the case. Although, uh, However, what's that one TV show uh, with the child dance stars um, with the big lady, and it's like a meme? Oh yeah, no, I, know I almost said Fetty Wap. It's something, Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. What? What's honey, the, isn't it Honey Boo Boo or something? something mom. Child something dance mom, mom or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dance Sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. Keep going. No, no worries. Um, by the way, I do believe that like child pageant shows and whatnot should be totally illegal. I, I kind of that's agree like, too. That's Honestly, I kind of agree. Yeah. Um, the thing is though, like, and just be a hundred percent like, like, don't think about this necessarily like, like in this um, scientific or in this like debate mm -hmm. sense. Just, just I want your sure. plain answer. Do you Absolutely. believe we would have ever had child drag shows? Um, or we would have ever had, you know, the kind of, you know, kink stuff that we're seeing now if homosexual marriage had not been legalized. Do I, th re sorry, repeat that one more time. Do I think that we would not see it had it not been legalized? Uh, do you think we would see it if it yeah. hadn't been legalized? Do I think we would see it if it hadn't been legalized? I don't, I don't know. I think, I, I think it's a separate issue. I... I well, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. I get, I, hold on. I get what you're saying is like, well, if we're, if we're cool with it, it's like, you know, every, every generation is more progressive than the last. So if we took, you know, you're, you're kind of saying if we didn't legalize gay marriage, it's like, well, then society would be entirely different. So I don't but really know. That society would likely not have child drag shows. Sure. But it would also have a lot of then 
the okay the heart okay we can compare it though and say well how many like more uh gay people would have missed out on marriage and how many uh children would be stuck in uh, child foster care or something like that Okay. No, that's, that's actually, first of all, that's perfect. Um, the one thing I'll say about, you know, gay people missing out on, on marriage, um, the, <laughs> this is one of those cases where the, well, actually I'm not going to make that argument cause I'm not, I'm not totally sure about my statistics there. Um, <laughs> but I will say that missing out on marriage in my opinion is of significantly less cost and there's a significantly le lower loss there than children being groomed by like pedophiles. That's right? not at all like, what I said. No, 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 I know, no, no. I'm not saying that you said that. I'm saying that Why are you for bringing me, it up? because because I'm I'm trying to see if you have a disagreement or if you agree here or if you think that I'm being you know disingenuous. To me, what I believe is happening right now, and you can disagree if you believe yeah. this is not happening, um, is that children are being put in drag shows, they're being sexualized, and you know sexuality and sexual displays are being normalized around that. And many um, gays are upset with that. Yes, yes, but I also believe again that um, that is kind of a consequence of the openness and the progressiveness around what? Sex. So I think the way you said it originally is that like, well, every society is more progressive than the last. It's not just progressivism. We could be totally economically progressive. We could be totally globalist. And I believe it in some extent, it, or to some extent, it does influence the social aspects. But I would say that sexual progressivism, which is homosexual marriage, is tied nearly directly um, in fact, no, I'll, I'll say it is tied directly to sexual progressivism, the way we're seeing it extended to children and the way we're seeing it extended to kinks being open to children, which is why children are being taught, you know, how to do, you know, uh, how to literally sodomize each other properly and safely. Uh, I think you are drawing a, a, a connection that is so uh, small compared to the bigger picture. Isn't doesn't every empire fall into decadence in the same way, like sexual immorality and all that? Did the Roman Empire uh, legalize gay marriage? You're drawing a direct line between this specific policy and the, 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 the conditions of human nature that cause empires to fall. That's what you're doing. Well, I don't, the, the empire falling bit, first of all, I kind of agree with that. You know, there's that idea I, of like the sexual energy within, you know, a society and the, the removal of monogamy or the occurrence of either polygamy or homosexuality drives a society down because of that. I know, think it's a symptom. Sexual yeah, energy. it's a symptom of moral, de of, of, of departing, moral decay and decadence, moral decay, and decadence yeah. departing from the fundamental traditions, which is kind of what and I want to get into fundamentally, because I do you, think we well, are. Well, well, hold on. Our do you agree or disagree religious. with that being, being the case? With, with that. Dec that with the, the societies falling down after moral decadence yeah. and why not yes th i don't know what you're asking sorry so wait so um do you or do you not right. i want to make sure i frame this as yep. not confusing as possible do you or do you not uh believe that that idea of empires falling yep. when there's due you know, to decadence, decadence yep um, and, and also sexual immorality. Yes, increasing. that's part of it. Yes. I am against okay. sexual immorality. We define it differently. Like I think OnlyFans is a terrible thing. I think teaching young women to go, hey, here's how you can make money by I selling can't. porn. That's a bad thing. That's entirely okay, different we, from gay marriage. We agree. We agree a lot there. I just, I'm finding it really difficult to divorce homosexual marriage, which is, which is necessarily about sexual attraction and sexual identification around sexuality no, I find it's about it, love I, isn't it isn't that like union i know that's gonna be fucking clipped it's about love i mean but no. is, i'm sorry like don't you believe that a marriage between a man and woman is like love before god and all that shit and all that you know nice stuff um, yes and also that a marriage is the institution which allows a man and a woman to procreate that is the condition under which they procreate um i would say heterosexual marriages are necessarily about heterosexual um acts as well I, again, we disagree on that. I think um, mm -hmm. I think we could we can go into mortal um, flesh and blood. This is the quote from Joseph Smith. God Himself from the, was from the King Follett sermon. I'm, once I'm we are now, as, I know, but I want to say it. I want to say it for my audience and your and audience. Has, we have okay, a, okay, sure. we have imagined uh, He was once a man like us. God Himself, the Father of us all, dwelt on earth. Brigham Young. He is the Father, the Father of our spirits, and was once a man in mortal flesh. Your religion claims that God, the Creator of the universe, was once a man. To claim that that is not apostasy in the highest degree, far more than me saying we should extend the principle that you know, it, uh, love thy neighbor as thyself, and if gay people want to get married, go let them. You are engaging in far more heretical apostatic beliefs, or whatever the word is, than I am. <laughs>